What is going on, guys? TJ here with Daily Grind Fantasy Sports to bring you this four-game divisional round NFL playoff DraftKings main slate. I am alongside the man, the myth, the legend, Kevin Kane. Kev, how you doing, my dude? I'm doing great. How you doing, Tay? You ready to go demon mode on this video or what, my guy? Ready to go absolute right, demon mode. It, crack. Before we start, I just want to say a few things. One, happy belated birthday to the man that I'm doing this video with, Kevin. Kevin mm. just turned 29 two days ago, Kev. I know you had a two big days ago. Thursday night. Uh, Kev, move the mic a little bit away from your mouth because I don't know there if it's go. the volume. Okay, it might be the volume that I have you too at. Too much demon mode. Yeah, too much demon mode. You got you to gotta cool it back a little bit, my dude. Uh, so a big happy belated, belated to Kevin. So if you didn't, make sure on this video you comment and wish Kevin a happy birthday. Also, if you didn't, Kevin and Matt did an MMA video today. Kev, big MMA slate tomorrow. So if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure you go to our YouTube channel, which you're obviously watching right now, and make sure you give that MMA video a comment. Wish Kevin another happy birthday. We're just going to be wishing <laughs> Kevin happy birthdays left and right. Run guys, for the next month. I'm fine with that. Yeah, exactly. It's his birthday month. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. So, guys, Patreon, $20 a month. For those of you who are not members, please check the description below. $20 gets you access to every single sport that we cover on DFS, our cheat sheets that Matt works tirelessly on. Um, it also gets you an invite to our Discord channel where it is legitimately just guys and dudes and, and ladies, women's, females, talking DFS day in and day out. Uh, Matt also added, uh, Kev, I don't know if you saw this, his stock uh, chat where um, they're literally mm. just talking stocks, stocks, uh, cryptocurrencies, what have you. So Matt's dropping knowledge in there as well. So guys, 20 bucks gets you access to all of that, all the sports we cover. Like I said, we got NBA night in and night out. We got NFL this weekend, obviously, the divisional rounds. We got a big MMA slate on Saturday, which is tomorrow. Again, make sure you go watch that video that Kevin Matt did today, uh, today being Friday, that is. Uh, we got League of Legends that just started back up, CSGO. Uh, we got some golf on the horizon as well. So make sure you check that out, guys. But Kev, Enough of that. Let's go ahead and dive into this four-game slate. Again, starting on Saturday, we got two games, okay? And let's let's just touch base on all the games that we have going as someone's FaceTiming me. We got the Rams in Green Bay right now. Green Bay favored by seven at home. We have the Ravens traveling to Buffalo, where uh, Buffalo is minus three at home as well. So we got two home favorites to start off that Saturday day. Uh, and then on Sunday, we have the Chiefs and the Browns. The Chiefs are 10-point favorites against Cleveland. And then the night game, we have the two old men battling. We have the Saints mm. and we have the Bucks. The Saints at home, minus three and a half. So we have all home favorites, Kevin, in this four-game divisional weekend. Uh, I'm excited to break down the slate. And, of course, we are going to start at the quarterback position, Kevin. We're going to go by ownership. And, of, and, you know, the one guy that we could have guessed, probably everybody could have guessed that is carrying the most ownership is going to be Patrick Mahomes at 8K, playing at home against the Cleveland Browns. You know, we saw the Browns get that win against Pittsburgh last week, Kev. I know it surprised a lot of people. With that being said, we saw a guy like Big Ben actually score the highest in terms of quarterbacks on the slate because he was playing from behind. So I do feel like that's a little skewed. But Patrick Mahomes going up against the 25th ranked off a defense in terms of DVOA against opposing quarterbacks. So Mahomes carrying the most ownership going up against Cleveland. We then see Josh Allen at 7,400 going up against uh, Baltimore, showing 14.7% ownership. And then Lamar Jackson at 7,600 going up against Buffalo, showing 13.3% ownership. Kev, if you're paying up for one of these three studs in cash, who are you looking at? Honestly, I'm probably going to take, I think all three are great. I think they're all three great picks. Uh, talked a little bit about this in my prize picks video. Mm -hmm. I think Mahomes, I think he's a lock for four touchdowns. I really do. That's, oh, I think it's okay. a Mahomes playoff game. I know that's a, that's a ballsy okay. statement. I mean, four is, oh, I like you know, yeah, I, I just, I believe, um, you know, Cleveland is capable of putting up a good amount of points. Um, we know that it's not the first time they did it against the Steelers and Steelers are a good defense. We've seen them do it. We've, they've cleared 40 points a couple times this year's uh, this year. Um, and I really believe that Cleveland can, I don't want to say they can keep pace, but they're, they've posed enough threat where Mahomes, they're not going to, I mean, this is playoffs. Anything can happen. We've seen it time and time out. Right. I think they're going to just go. I just think they're going to go. They're not going to treat it like, I don't care if they're up by 20, you know, 20 something in the, right. in the first foot half. I think, yeah. Foot on the gas. Exactly. And, and I think uh, that being said, you know, that defense can't stop anything when, when someone like Mahomes gets going. Cause I mean, we saw it, like you said, big Ben started storming back. We saw when they were up on uh who was it? The Cowboys earlier this year, they were yep. up by just as much. They were against almost this Pittsburgh and yep. Cowboys almost came back. So, um, 
Same sort of situation. I love that. I think Lamar Jackson, I love playoffs is a different animal. And we know that T. I know we love the matchup against Buffalo, but I also just love the fact, think of it this way. They might not run Lamar Jackson as much as he would even like to right. um, during regular season due to the risk of injury. You know what I mean? If you see like his his, his attempts and running, uh, he tied for his his most attempts rushing last game. You know why? It was the playoffs and they needed him. So mm -hmm. I love that. And I think that's going to be the same sort of thing we see against Buffalo. It's the playoffs. This is where you can take that risk. You're going to run a little extra hard for that first down. You're going to run that extra time if you think it's going to get you that first down. So I think his legs are going to do a lot of the work. We saw 16 attempts for 136 yards. Granted, he did break one. Even take that broken one away, he smoked on the ground. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I do think this is going to be that kind of game. And I think uh, Josh Allen makes a really good dance partner. That being said, I do like Josh Allen too. He has a tougher matchup with the Baltimore defense, but... TJ, did you know that he finished number one in uh, PPR scoring for fantasy quarterbacks this year? I didn't know that. I saw that uh, when I was looking over yeah. the Picks video. No, yeah. It's crazy. He's, he's very good this year, yeah. Absolutely crazy. I mean, maybe that helps with Dak being uh, out. Kyler slowed down because yep. of the AC joint. Russell Wilson slowed down. But that being said, he's Josh balling consistent. out. Consistent, yeah. Super I consistent. So I, I love all three. As to who I'd want to pick, it's tough. It's tough, man. Um I don't really have a favorite. I hate to okay. cop out like that, but oh, I mean, you know me, I'll take a hard stance when I believe it, but I don't believe it. I think all three are great options. Yeah. So uh, for me, Kev, and I'm not, I'm not going to try and piggyback too much on what you just said, but yeah, I think I, I love the matchup between, between the bills and Baltimore, but I, I would probably go Patrick Mahomes and cash at AK. Um, he is carrying the most ownership substantially and rightfully so they have the highest team total over under right now at 33 and a half, the highest over under at 57 playing at home against a Cleveland team that is riding high off their first playoff win. So, so yeah, I think Mahomes would be my play at AK, but you know, if you're buying down at Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson, I don't hate it either. Uh, but Kev, if we're looking at tournaments, you know, most of the ownership is going to those three guys that we just alluded to. And, you know, a third of it is going to Patrick Mahomes. And it is really tough to get different because we only have eight teams playing in this divisional playoffs. Um, so, you know, if I'm looking at, if I'm looking at tournament plays, you know, Aaron Rodgers is a guy only coming in at 11% owned right now. I know it's a tough matchup against the Rams, but we know how he can play, especially, you know, with Devontae Adams. And when it comes to playoffs, like playing at home in that cold weather, I love Aaron Rodgers as, as a tournament play at 6,900. Mm -hmm. Brady, Drew Brees, Baker Mayfield at 5,300, Kev. Baker Mayfield showing 8% owned. Could we see a potential where, you know, the Chiefs go up 21 nothing or, you know, 28-10, whatever you want to call it, if they're up big in the second half and they just let Baker Mayfield get loose and try and let him come back? Like, that's what keeps playing in my head. So I really like Baker Mayfield as a tournament play at 5,300. I think he's so cheap in a game where they're going to need him to, you know, throw the ball and be competitive against the Chiefs to have any kind of chance. So if you're looking at tournaments here, where, where do you think you're looking in terms of quarterbacks? I agree with everything you said, honestly. Um, you know, the, th the thing is, I just think, uh, and and this is going to be, uh, you know, this is going to hit some people, but, um, and I love the Chiefs. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of Chiefs haters. I love the Chiefs. I think they're a fun team to watch. I mean, they're going to be a team I'm actually rooting for um, in the playoffs, even though, you know, they, they smoke us as, as the Patriots every year. I'll say this, Chiefs fans, your defense sucks. It sucks. Their secondary sucks. It just does. It can't stop anything. So I think Baker at 5,300 can absolutely ball out. I don't think a honey badger can do it all himself. I just think, uh, you know, it, it's just every, everybody else besides, you know, Tyron on that secondary has been, you know, hurting a little bit. So yeah. I definitely think uh, it's, I don't know. I, I really do think they're going to get lit up a little bit, um, which obviously that's why I like Mahomes too. I think he, he can reciproc reciprocate with the best of them. And I do think uh, Baker Baker can ball out, man. And I, yeah. I almost, I don't want to say he's like got the clutch gene or he's like a playoff guy, And I, but I don't know. Watch him against the Steelers, man. Fearless, absolutely fearless. And I really like to see that move, uh, out of him. Right. Uh, no, I, I agree with you there, Kevin. For that whole time, I did not have your beautiful face up there, so I do apologize. But we're way too oh, you far. Got it now. We're way too far to move to have oh. a restart. So we're gonna we're gonna we're get gonna restart so people can see my ugly mug. No, okay. Uh, yeah, and then you know, like I said, Kev, there's some in, there's some intriguing matchups like Brady and Breeze. I think that's gonna be more of a defensive matchup. But I'll I'll have some stabs at both of them. Brady, you know, zero and two this year against Drew Brees as a Buck. Uh, struggled that last game, especially. I think he only had like six DraftKings points. Uh, mm -hmm. Where are you last game against? Yeah, five point three. Six. Is this um, breezes? 
No, that was Brady against, oh, against Brady. the Saints. So, like, yeah, Brady's been really bad against uh, teams over Awful. 500 this year for the Bucs. Um, but, you know, playoff Tom, we know it better than I think anybody, Kev, right? Yep, New England guys rooting for rooting for Pats, watching Brady our whole lives. So we I hope the Bucs win, man. I really do. Yeah. I hope they win the whole thing. But All right, that's but, me. But, but let's go ahead and move on to running backs now, Kevin. Yep. In terms of ownerships, there are ownership. Excuse me, there are some guys that are garnering a lot. And then uh, right now, I'm seeing Cam Akers currently at 37.5 percent. I keep bringing your face off there. You're back up there, Kev. 37.5 percent for Cam Akers at 5,700, showing the most owned running back. Then we have Alvin Kamara at 7,900 at 33.5 percent, and then Devin Singletary rounding out the top three with Zach Moss being out at 4,500, showing 31.1 percent ownership kev running backs cash who do you like love acres love him at that price tag you can fit him in i love singletary at that pause i don't love singletary singletary sucks i i've owned him two years in a row and i will row singletary and i and i you know what i it's because i loved him out of college i loved him so much i have the right to say that i loved him i love duke johnson it's the same thing i love these little dudes who are like really quick in college and then they get and then they run against an aaron donald who can also run really fast somehow because you know genetics just don't make sense for him and he just and it's just players like that and he just doesn't have the same success he's too small he's like 5'4 120 i think but it's just it's just singletary just does not have the success at this level Level. but right. he can still catch balls josh allen actually hurts him i think in the red zone because he takes a lot of his rushes with you know within that five but that being said i still 4500 it's just it's gonna be hard for him to miss that cam Akers, i love i think they were saving him for the uh playoffs i really do um he's been balling out in in three of his last four games uh tj or sorry mm-hmm. four of his last five games he's had 22 touches or more that's unbelievable that's great production that is why i really want to target him and that is why someone like aaron jones i actually haven't been as keen on him we've seen a kind of a dip in his production in the amount of touches he's had um he hasn't you know he's only cleared 20 i think one out of his last five games something like that so a little bit different than what we're seeing out of like an acres you know what i mean so i definitely like uh you know, I like Acres in that matchup. I also think, like, when I'm just looking, I'm just going to talk about those two, and they're in the same game. They're mm-hmm. ownership one and two. Um, Aaron Jones is going up a significantly better defense. Um, the Rams were a top three defense against the run this year. Uh, I believe they're second in terms of DraftKings scoring uh, or defensively DraftKings scoring. Mm-hmm. And you know, the Packers have been a lot more you know receptive to running backs. So I do think that's going to affect me a little bit. I mean, the right I'm looking right now, if it just if the uh, in terms of DraftKings scoring the Pa- the Packers are what twenty fourth, yeah. So yeah, against the run, like so that, yeah, twenty fourth. It's, it's 25th, yeah. I don't know. I mean, if that, I would, I would like if they were the same price. Call me crazy. I'd rather have Acres. Okay. Call me crazy. And then they're not. They're le- Aaron Jones is eleven hundred more. So right. that's my stance on that. Okay. Yeah. No, I like that, Kev. And then, um, you know, Aaron Jones is still carrying some ownership right now. I currently have him at twenty two point three percent. So he is up there in terms of ownership. Oh, really? Um, on the last one I got, he's still he's the second most running back. See, not on yours. Uh, he's around six. So, I mean, yeah, there's, there's going to be a lot of guys that are carrying ownership between Akers, Kamara, Singletary, CEH, uh, Ch- if he's good to go, CEH, uh, Chubb, Aaron Jones. So, um, I think there are some really good cash options you can go. I think Cam Akers is probably going to be my favorite Kev, uh, at $5,700. I think then Kamara would probably be my second favorite, honestly. Um, yep. Yeah, at 7,900, I mean, it is a very tough matchup against uh, the Bucks front seven that ranks first against opposing running backs this year. Yep. Um, but, you know, we know how versatile Kamara is out of the backfield. He can not only run, but he's a very good pass catching back as well. Um, he is the spend up option, too, on this slate. So um, I, I do like, oh, I pulled up the wrong thing. I do like Kamara. Kev, in terms of tournaments, we're seeing a guy like J.K. Dobbins at 6K come in at 9% ownership in a decent matchup against the Bills. But we're also having murmurs about CEH potentially being out. So I think a guy like Lev Bell potentially comes in the mix at 5,100. I'd be interested to see if CEH is out, what the ownership is going to look like on a guy like Le'Veon Bell. Um, so basically what I'm trying to get at is if you're looking at tournaments, are you going to go up for a guy like J.K. Dobbins at 6K? I would say Chubb. Um, at 6,600, but I am showing him at 27% ownership. Yep. Or are you going to try and find a cheaper play like maybe a Kareem Hunt or a, or a Leonard Fournette if you're looking at tournaments? Well, you know, it's always a good idea to differentiate yourself at the wide right. receiver position. Um, we know that. And on this slate, I think it's a really healthy one to do that in. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to stick closer to the chalk. Uh, okay. with with my GBP picks for running back. I like if that. I was to take one, yeah, I, you know, it just makes sense to me. I, like you said with Lev Bell, definitely someone to monitor. 
honestly, for me, I would probably lean towards a J.K. Dobbins. Um, that's the one. Or if you want to take a swing, if you're talking like you know Millie Maker, you're entering you know 150 lineups, take a shot at Latavius Murray. Seriously, like that could be you know especially in a game where they could find themselves ahead. I mean, it's super tough team to run on. We know Alvin Kamara is gonna you know get a lot of the action, and that's why I love him in this matchup. Is he's a pass catching back. You know what I mean? The Bucks aren't nearly as deadly. Uh, you know near the numbers as they are up the guts and that's where you know they can stop every it's might be the best run you've ever seen you know what i mean do you want to run against yeah. sue and jpp and white right. and Lamonte right. Dave? no no thank you yeah, um thank you. so but i like what you said about chubb too just the ownership yeah but yeah I, i'd probably differentiate myself more so in the wide wide receiver position too yeah no i i do like that i think sticking close to the chalk for running backs is probably the ideal build um between kamara aaron jones nick chubb acres um you know if ceh is out i guess you could throw Levin there but i'd probably avoid it um you know, and then Singletary without Moss, he's going to get some healthy touches. Uh, I know we talked about Yeldon potentially being in the mix, but obviously something you really don't need to worry about. Um, but yeah, for me, Kev, I think if I'm looking at uh, tournaments, uh, Kareem Hunt maybe at 17.5% ownership in a game where they could see themselves falling behind, uh, mm-hmm. maybe utilize him a little bit out of the backfield as the pass catching back. Um, you know, it is a fantastic matchup for both those Browns running backs for Chubb at 6,600. I mean, the chiefs rank 31st in DVOA against opposing running backs. So, um, you know, we, you just mentioned how the chiefs defense is really bad. So, uh, I think attacking the chiefs defense and a really high over under in a game where the Browns are going to find themselves most likely in a hole is probably an ideal situation. That's smart, see, especially like, I mean, we saw Kareem Hunt, very smart. I mean, we saw Kareem Hunt got two touchdowns, and they weren't receiving touchdowns either. He got two touchdowns against Pitt, which is like, okay, they really want to keep this guy active. You know, that's that's interesting to me. Right, yeah. So let's go ahead and move on to wide receivers, Kev, and I want to touch on some of the chalkier ones that we're currently showing. And I mean, I think this probably goes without saying that Tyreek Hill, who is the most second most expensive on the slate, excuse me, behind Devontae Adams, currently showing the most ownership, barely outbeating Michael Thomas and Devontae Adams. So so Tyreek at 8K, showing 31.4% ownership. We then have Michael Thomas at 6,700 still, Kev. They're still disrespecting our guy at mm. 30.7% mm. ownership. And then we have Devontae Adams at 8,600, showing 30% ownership. So those are the only three guys that I currently have showing north of 30% ownership. Kev, if you're taking one of these studs, you know what? Kev, let's throw Stefan Diggs into that mix as well. It's He's actually in my area. top four for ownership. Okay. So yeah, I know so I have Jarvis Land. I have Jarvis Landry just out uh, out percentaging him in types of own- in terms of ownership at fifty six hundred, showing twenty eight percent, and then I have Diggs at seventy three hundred, throwing showing twenty three point six percent. So all relative. They're all, they're yeah, all so relative. those are the five. Those are the five most owned guys that I see on the slate. It's Tyree Kill, Michael Thomas, Devontae Adams, Landry, and Diggs. So Kev, yeah. if you had to start with one of those guys, where do you think you're gonna go? I think if we're talking cash games, Michael For Thomas cash, is 6,700 yep. makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, the Bucks, good defense, not a great secondary. Um, you can definitely pass on them. Yep. Uh, Drew Brees is going to be, you know, a personal matchup. I mean, we really haven't seen still the sample size of Michael Thomas this year. I still think he's hampered from the injuries. I really do. Yeah. Um, just the way he's been playing. But, he, you know, the thing is, he has played the Buck, Bucks twice this year in his limited capacity. He has played the Bucks twice. Granted, fir- first one was, I think, believe the game he got injured. And the last, the uh, second one was, is his first game back um also with Taysom, so it's hard to really use that as a good sample size it's not completely accurate um i do like him for cash i just think it's so cheap um it, it can definitely help you looking at Devonte and tyreek it's gonna be very interesting i do think Devonte adams and aaron Rodgers combined and just you know individually are matchup proof okay that being said they have to be against the rams because right. it is rams that secondary is absolutely terrifying uh, and I do think Devontae Adams is matchup proof. He can ball out. We know that, but he still has his games. T like he's so consistent. He gets touchdowns. He gets all stuff, but like he has in his past, it's, it's kind of weird in his past, you know, four games, he got a 27 game. That's good. That's really good. That's elite right. 11, not great. 16 good, but not enough for Devontae Adams. And then 46 where it's like, okay, you broke the slate and you're the highest scoring player on slate. So it's like, right. He can do it all. I mean, I definitely like him for cash. I like him for GBP just for, you know, he's had a couple 40-something burgers this year. Granted, it's a very tough defense. I still think he yeah. can. Um, Stephon Diggs, I know he recently um, had that 44-point game against us. I still don't see him as the highest ceiling guy, especially at 7,300. I just don't see him as the highest ceiling guy where I see someone like Tyreek Hill who could absolutely just be uncoverable that day. You know what I mean? When, when a wide receiver shines, you see like 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 him or Devontae Adams and they just start going. Good luck. 
you can't stop them. Right. You've proven you can't stop. Nothing's going to change in 60 minutes. So that that's the way I look at it. I look, I'm looking for ceiling, but I think if we're just talking safety, TJ, in a long winded response, I think Michael Thomas and Stefan Diggs are good for safety. Uh, Devonte Adams is always safe for his floor, but I mean, realistically, I mean, if we're talking ones that are like, you can interchange between cash and GPP, I'm looking at Devonte and Tyreek. Yeah, no, I, I like that. And to piggyback on you a little bit, I, I think Michael Thomas for me at 6,700 is going to be a lock. Um, again, it is scary thinking about that Buck secondary, but at the same time, you got to trust Drew Brees and you got to trust his favorite target, especially showing 67, $6,700, I still think is criminal. He was 6,300 last week. I uh, got a little bit of a price bump, but even with that, I still think for cash, I am going to be locking him in. Between mm-hmm. Tyreek Hill and Adams, I think I do lean Hill with you. Uh, I do get nervous about Adams going up against Jalen Ramsey. Like, do, do we think Jalen Ramsey just tries to take him out? Like, are they going to need to double him? Do they trust Jalen Ramsey to play Maybe him one I don't. Um, it's the only player, I will tell you that. I, it's the only player I think in the NFL I'm not worried about. Okay. I, Devontae Adams, I don't know if you saw his 20. i got to send you a uh, stat metric on his 2019 to 2020 season matchups. Yeah, and it was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was right, like see that. it was like Gilmore, Rowe. It was like like yeah, Lattimore. It was everybody. crazy, and he just yeah. toast. I think he's matchup proof. Ramsey's great. He's matchup okay. proof. That's my okay. opinion. I'm excited but, to see that though. Um, yeah, I, am I feel too. like Ramsey tries to get under his skin. But Kev, so I think that's some good cash plays. I, I do like Jarvis Landry, man, at 5600. Again, I keep alluding yeah. to the fact that they're 10 point underdogs on the road going up against Kansas City that could easily come out and put up 40 points and it's like they're gonna have to play from behind like that's just my honest opinion and how I feel how that game script is gonna turn out so that's why I like guys like Jarvis Landry and I like guys like Kareem Hunt um, and Baker Mayfield for that matter I think they're all really cheap and I don't trust that Chiefs defense to absolutely shut out Cleveland do you want to know something very weird too just to snowball off that I love that things this is about the weirdest you'll ever see okay the Chiefs are second, okay? It's top two yep. against One, two. opposing wide receivers this year in terms of DraftKings scoring. Okay. So shutting down wide receivers, yet are 30th against quarterbacks. Yeah. So bizarre. You know, what are they just giving any touchdowns to tight, tight ends and running backs? Ends I don't running backs, man. Just really susceptible to them. Interesting. In- interesting. It's a good but, stat, Kev. I just thought that was very weird. No, it is weird. But let's um let's go ahead and move on to tournament plays. And yeah. there's some guys one. that I'm definitely interested in. Okay. Um, I think there's a lot of really good tournament plays here that are showing some pretty low ownership. And if we go by uh by price, okay, uh, a guy like Mike Evans at sixty four hundred, kind of right below a guy like Michael Thomas that might carry like fifty percent ownership in cash, I think is a pretty yep. good tournament option at eleven percent owned that I'm seeing right now. Um, I'm looking solely based on ownership, Kev. Uh, a guy like Cooper Cup at 5,300, I think he's really cheap, only showing 13% ownership for me. Uh, some of these cheaper Buffalo guys off of a guy like Stefan Diggs, so like Cole Beasley or John Brown, I think one of them could have really good games. Uh, but Kev, in, in terms of GPPs, where are you looking at? You know, it's funny. I got, it's, I don't know. It's, I love Mike Evans. He's like, I don't know if you know this, he's probably my favorite active receiver. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like Mike Evans. I was, literally praying like more than I wanted the Pats to win a game more than I wanted anything else to happen in the NFL. I wanted him to hit a thousand yards again. I wanted him to break Randy Moss's record. I, I love Mike Evans. Um, one of my favorite guys. I, I just, I hate to say this, but, and I, I really sorry to Mike Evans, but Lattimore has a two bedroom in his head. He just, and that's the one thing I am I nervous about. Him. It's just, he just does not do well against Lattimore. That's my one concern that might create more opportunities. And they know that. And I think they're going to just use Lattimore on him and just let everyone else kind of play a yeah. B and Godwin leaning me to be towards them a little more. Um, Woods and Cup. I'm thinking, TJ, maybe you lock like some lineups in, like you lock a player in, like a Devante or a Diggs or one of the top cheese guys. Make sure, make like hope that they hit and then start differentiating yourself. Like pair that lineup with that and then you grab Cup in one lineup. You grab Woods in one lineup. You grab AB one in the lineup. You grab, you know what I mean? You start mixing and matching. But I'll tell you right now, just individually, just not looking like that. I really like Marquise Brown. He's been heating up. I think he's been flying under the radar at 5,200. That's ridiculously cheap. Easy price point to clear. And to make optimal, it's not too hard, especially how he's been playing. He's just cleared 20 points back-to-back games. Uh, had 109 yards last game. I mean, he just looked absolutely fantastic. Uh, 109 yards last game. Two touchdowns the game before. And uh, he's been really, really consistent, too. Yeah. T. And I think a lot of people haven't realized that. He's gotten double digits since uh, week 12. So, I mean, it's just... I don't know. I, I think people are sleeping on 5,200 just doesn't seem accurate for what he's playing like. Yeah, no, I agree with you there. I think that price tag is a little skeptical, honestly. I think him and uh, 
him and Mark Andrews have been really pivotal for those, uh, you know, Baltimore receivers, especially in the second half of the season. Both of them kind of woke up after a sluggish first half of the season. So I do like that. I think he is pretty cheap at 5,200. Uh, there are some there are some flyers that I'll be taking chances on, Kev, like a guy like Richard Higgins at 4,100. Uh, Lazard at 3,900 I think is a decent decent tournament play. I, I was actually going to ask you. Sorry, not to snow. I was no, going to no. ask you how you feel about uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling because I feel yeah. like he's the guy who does stupid stuff and breaks. I mean, you look at his last games, literally – Negative 0.4. Yeah. Awesome. Good job, bud. <laughs> I remember that. Zero. Yeah. Good, job. Good job, bud. And then a 20 and a 17. And he's yeah. 3,800. It's like, geez, dude. He has a 27 point game this year and 19, another 19, but then like a one, a two. Like, it's just, right. I think the guy who breaks slates. So I think I think when when it comes to MVS, it's more so like he's really big on those long touchdown receptions. So if mm-hmm. he can haul in one of those, you know, like a forty-five yard touchdown, uh, f- you know, from Rogers where he gets open over the middle and there's no safety help, like yeah, he can easily get you, you know, fifteen DraftKings points if he can find that through the defense. So I do like taking chances on him too. I was going to say McCole Hardman as well going up against uh, Cleveland because you know someone's going to have two touchdowns that shouldn't for yep. Kansas City. Good. Very good way to put it. So uh, I do like that, and I think there's some really good ways to differentiate yourself, especially at the wide receiver position, like you said, Kev. But let's go ahead and keep this bad boy rolling. Let's go over to the tight end position. And there is one guy, Kev, in terms of pricing that is just it's so much more expensive than anybody else, and he is carrying the most ownership, and that is obviously going to be Travis Kelsey, currently at $7,800, showing 27% ownership. We then have Mark Andrews, the second most expensive guy in the slate at 5K, who we just talked about with the Baltimore receivers, him and um, uh, who else were we just talking about? Uh, about who? Baltimore? Yeah. Who, uh, Marquise, who were we just talking about? Marquise Brown? Yeah. Why am I just uh, – Hollywood Brown. I'm sorry. Hollywood? Guys. It's been a long day. Um, yeah, so Mark Andrews, uh, 23.5% owned Kev at 5K. And then Tyler Higby actually showing the third highest owned tight end on the slate at 3K at 18.2% ownership. Kev, I think it's kind of it, – it's just the question is, are you paying up for Travis Kelsey at tight end or not? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's, <laughs> That's it. it. Yeah. Yep. Do you have Dude, he's the best tight end I've ever seen. I hate saying that, and I you don't crucify okay. me. I don't know. I don't know. I'm about sorry. That, but like, I'm sorry. I know it's this year. It pushed me over. It pushed me over. I'm sorry. Right. This is the best year I've ever seen out of a tight end ever. That's that's it. I'm just that's gonna that this one pushed me over. I don't. I know. I can't. Sorry, Gronk. Sorry. All right. Well, so, I disagree with you wholeheartedly with that fair, discussion. Fair. Um, I still think Gronk is the best tight end we've ever that's seen. Fair. I think Travis Kelsey is starting to track him down a little bit, though. And if he can have another season like he did this season and potentially a second one after that, like, yeah, then I would I would really uh, welcome that and, and probably agree with you there that Kelsey could potentially go down as the best tight end ever. Um, yep. But, yeah, I think, Kev, if we're talking about paying up, if you have the salary, so if you are going to go up to get a guy like Mahomes and you do want to spend up at running back, um, I think you can differentiate yourself at wide receiver. Again, there are running backs that you can salary save with, like Cam Akers is cheap. We talked about Singletary. So there are options that will allow you to get up for a guy like Travis Kelsey. Uh, for me, it's pretty simple. I either want Kelsey or I either want Mark Andrews. Um, but for me, I would obviously lean Kelsey. Uh, Cleveland currently ranks 25th in DVOA against opposing tight ends, so it is a pretty soft matchup. Highest over under at 33 and a half, highest over under for the game at 57, like all signs point to a big game from Travis Kelsey, who's been so consistent this year. Uh, so I do like spending up at Kelsey if you do have the flexibility. Um, and if you don't, Kev, I do like Mark Andrews. I think Austin Hooper is in play. Again, I keep talking about Cleveland playing from behind against the Chiefs. So at 3,800, I do think he's viable in cash. If you can't get up for a guy like Travis Kelsey, but Kevin, in terms of tournaments, you're talking about Kelsey being the best tight end ever. What about a guy like Gronk at 3,600? Do you have any interest there? Or, I mean, what are your thoughts there? Or like Jared Cook at 4K? Like any interest two. in some of these There's two. Guys? Get, look, can you get the right. trifecta? You want me to get the third guy? Uh, it's probably going to be Tanyan, I would guess. There Let's he go. is. That's See, the guy right there. That's, Let's go. that's what it is. Yeah, I think those are pretty good tournament plays. I think they're good pivots off of a guy like Austin Hooper. Um, if you are going to go cheap, um, I, I think you can go to guys like Tanyan, uh, Gronk, and Jared Cook in tournaments. But, but Kev, talk talk to us about that. Who would who would be your favorite out of those three? Out of those three, honestly, just for consistency, I mean Tanyan, and obviously we know that the Rams are going to try to you know lock up Devontae. Um, right. They're going to go. I think he's going to have to. They have a great run D. I think. Uh, this is a game where Rodgers is going to have to go. You know, they're going to try to make Rodgers beat them with, uh, you know, guys like Tanyan and 
uh, uh, Valdi Scantling and mm-hmm. Lazard and players like that. So I definitely think uh, that's one of those situations. Jared Cook, just Breeze loves him. Um, yes, he does. I think you know, good yeah, I think target. very good red zone target. And uh, Gronk for me is more so just, uh, I mean, Mike Evans, like I said, I think he's going to get locked up. I really believe that. And it's Gronk and Brady in the playoffs. I mean, Right. How many times have we seen it? See, it's just I got this 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 tingly feeling that just makes yeah. me think they're just gonna yeah it's it's just gonna be something magical where he just hits him for you know Gronk's gonna look like he's twenty five years old again and just catch uh Don't you know you. I know I know Don't especially you. after I just said what I did about Kelsey but yeah the disrespect I mean uh, let's just move one more year because, oh, one more year yeah. one more year of one k yards for Kelsey yeah 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 we'll keep seeing it all right Kev let's finish it up here we got defenses and in terms yep. of ownership it's a little spread out. Uh, Ravens currently showing the most ownership for me at 17.3%, actually tied with the Buffalo Bills. So we have yeah, we have the Bills, we have the Bills and Baltimore going up against one another, both showing the highest ownership, both at 17.3% for me on Roto. We have the Rams at 2,600, at, traveling obviously to Green Bay at 16.4% ownership. We got the Bucks at 3,100 at 12.7% ownership. So Kev, I guess I'll ask you this: If you have to go anywhere in terms of cash, where do you think you would land? Honestly, I'd probably pay up. Like, yes, I agree with you there. Yep. Like, that's, yep. everything else could be a nightmare. Like, yep. honestly, like, every one of those could blow up so bad. Yep. Like, if the Rams win, it's not going to be probably because they dropped 40 points. You know what I mean? Where every right. other one looking, it's like terrifying. Like, really? Yep. Bills are number one? Okay. You can wait till Lamar just does something or right. in- inverse. Oh, Ravens are number two? Okay, wait till Josh Allen does, like, you know, drops 40 for burger on your 40. I don't know. I'm yep. just, that's scary to me. No, I, I agree with you. I think if I can go anywhere, I am going to try and pay up for the Packers. Uh, I feel like the Chiefs have the pick six in them, honestly, against Baker, so that wouldn't surprise me either. I, like um, I do get scared paying down here. Yeah, like the Ravens and Bills game, I feel like that has the potential to shoot out. It is a 49.5 uh, over under currently, but I wouldn't be surprised if Josh Allen has a really strong game and Lamar Jackson. Um, so I'm not too high on that. So I think paying up here for the Packers or Chiefs would be you know, my best opinion. Um, and I think that's where I kind of want to land. So I think that, that I think that's I think that's the play. I think you do want to spend up for the Packers. Um, and then if you can't, I think I would go Chiefs. Honestly, I think I'd go with the two most expensive defenses, as boring as that is. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, guys. So that's that's gonna go ahead and round up this divisional playoffs four game DraftKings main slate. Uh, Kev, only a couple more weeks of football, unfortunately. But that's okay, guys, because we have plenty of other sports that we are currently covering. So, again, if you are not a Patreon member, go ahead and check it out. The description is in the link below. We offer so many sports that we cover day in and day out. Basketball, MMA, Kev. Big slate tomorrow, again, like I talked about. And if you haven't, make sure you go watch that video where Kevin and Matt, but mostly Kevin, uh, (laughs) 95% Kevin, breaks down the MMA slate. Uh, So we're really excited about that. But, guys... If you are not subscribed, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and please also smash that like button if you could. Really helps out the stream, helps out me and Kevin, and uh, least importantly, Matt. So, Kev, any final words? Love you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Really love the support. We see it every single time in the comments, everything. Thank you guys. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, My final words, Kev, is that I really hope that I recorded this right and that we can hear you when we go back and replay it because if this didn't work, then we will both be sad and cry. All right, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. And with all that being said, let's cash.